Order, order. Uh, good afternoon and um, welcome to the Transport Select good Committee afternoon. and uh, a welcome to the Indeed. Minister, who of course was previously a very active member yes. of this committee and I, I think you'll see the member have maintained their standards. I am pleased <laughs> to hear it. Um, Minister, would you like to um, say who you are for our record and for your, your yeah, team? Uh, I'm Paul Maynard, I'm the Minister for Rail, Parliament and the Secretary of State of the Department for Transport and with me is Bernadette Kelly, who is the Director of Rail, and Peter Wilkinson, who is also from the Rail Department at the Department. Right, so thank you very much. Um, at the moment, there is virtual chaos on Southern Railway, um, very angry passengers, um, and it appears that nobody can do very much about it. Um, who's responsible for this mess? Is it a um, minister, the department, or is it Southern Rail, PTR, the company responsible for running this franchise? It is entirely the case that the current level of service is unacceptable for passengers. I recognise that immediately and wholeheartedly. Since I was appointed on Monday, I have been looking at this in very great detail. I have met, along with the Secretary of State, with Charles Horton from GTR, with David Brown from the Go Ahead Group. I've also met twice with the Secretary of State with uh, Mark Khan from Network Rail, both on Monday and on Tuesday. Um, it's clear that we are discussing here one of the most stressed parts of the railway network. Um, we're having what is almost a perfect storm of circumstances. We're having the issues caused by the upgrade of London Bridge, and then on top of that, we are having the added consequences of the current unofficial industrial action which is occurring on the network. And trying to cope with all of those is a great challenge both for GTR and for Network Rail, all of whom I'm exhorting to improve their performance, to put the passenger first, to look at what is going on and to improve performance. And yet we still have issues such as the uh, collapsed sewer stroke sinkhole that we saw at Forest Hill um, on, uh, I think that was Monday afternoon. We thought that would take four days to clear. I congratulate Thames Water in sorting it out within two days. But we still have line speed restrictions. We still have a 20 minute delay as far as East Croydon. Then we had the issues at Brighton yesterday caused by a signalling failure. It's very clear that the, the entire stretch of line has serious resilience issues. But, but who is actually responsible for putting things right? The, the major works that are taking place on the line were, were known about mm -hmm. before this contract was ever let. And when we spoke to GTR at one of our earlier sessions, and they admitted that way before there was any kind of industrial action, the company simply didn't have enough drivers. And when we look at what's happened since the remedial plan, so-called, has been put into effect, um, it's still pathetic. Um, Southern Main Line, um, only 26% of trains arrived within five minutes of the time they were meant to be there, 12% on time. And this is when the so-called remedial plan has actually been put into effect. So who's responsible for this sorry state of affairs? Well, I believe the responsibility lies at the moment with the franchise holder to improve performance. DFT is monitoring closely what GTR are doing and we are in contact with them on a daily basis to make sure that they are trying as hard as they can to improve performance. When the remedial plan was put in place, were the department involved with GTR in um, agreeing exactly what would yes. be in that plan? The department didn't have to either agree or assent to um, Sorry, I'm, not, I'm talking about the, the wrong element now. And the remedial plan was essentially triggered by the uh, GTR being in breach in terms of some of its performance measures relating to short running trains or lack of drivers and so on. So that remedial plan was a key um, part of what the department drew up in cooperation with GTR to work to build their performance and improve the outcomes for passengers. And the revised timetable, which involved massive cuts in services, mm -hmm. and we were told this would make things more reliable. Did it just mean that more cuts more regularly would be better known to passengers? Or what did it mean? It doesn't seem to have made anything reliable at all, looking at these figures. And 12% of southern mainline trains arrived on time after the revised timetable has been put into effect. The purpose of the revised timetable is, to my mind, first and foremost, to ensure a degree of predictability for passengers before the revised timetable was introduced. Passengers could not be certain whether trains would be cancelled or not. So by moving to the 
revised timetable which runs 85% of services, at least passengers can be certain um, that the scheduled trains are going to arrive on time according to the revised timetable. Of course, passengers will still be compensated uh, in accordance with the original timetable so that they will still get what they are entitled to. But by ensuring that we have the revised timetable, that's giving Network Rail an opportunity to have more route access to improve the reliability of the network. It's also giving GTR time to improve driver training, bring more drivers back onto the trains. So we've seen just from Monday this week more services running to Lewis, more services running to uh, Seaford, more services running through the Mole Valley and elsewhere in Surrey. So what I'm urging GTR to do is to work as hard as they can and as fast as they can towards restoring the full timetable. But they will have to take a judgment with every passing week as to what more services they can put on as they build more resilience back into the service. But I am quite clear that a revised timetable is a temporary measure it is not acceptable on behalf of passengers and I look to GTR to continue to improve performance and to resolve the industrial dispute that may be ongoing with RMT.